Hello and welcome to Coffee Break, brought to you by the Middle Alabama Area Agency on Aging, or M4A. This is the third session of our Coffee Break, which is a collaborative effort between our Alabama Cares Caregiver Program and our Panda Project covering Shelby County. For previous episodes, feel free to check out our YouTube channel. Today we have special guests Angela and Chris Evans, the sous chef and pastry chef for the famed Café DuPont in Birmingham. Uh, We invited these two guests to come on to kind of give us uh, a a few creative ideas that caregivers can utilize as something that maybe they can, a couple of meals that they can stretch, something that's quick and easy and also healthy to make. So we are really excited for these two to join us today and we really hope that you find their information and their suggestions as helpful to help ease the burden of your caregiver role. Cafe du Pont. Uh, I'm the uh, executive chef here. Um, I you know, was wanted to do a dish today. Um, I know Jennifer and Jeremy had asked to do some healthy dishes for care keepers and whatnot. So what we wanted to do is do a dish called uh, pasta de cheche, which is basically pasta with chickpeas. Um, this is going to be kind of an interesting kind of a scenario because what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you and then we're going to kind of cut scene to what the dish I had done some footage before and then you're going to catch up with it but the the beginning of the dish is you'll want to get one uh, onion cut it in half and then you're going to dice it up Uh, you're going to saute it with about three tablespoons of olive oil um, and get that nice and golden not not just golden, translucent, and then about three cloves of garlic that you're going to chop up as well, add that to your pan, okay? Then uh, you're going to use one, about a half a can of peeled tomatoes. We were using San Marzano uh, tomatoes. Uh, I like to just crush them up with my hand. Um, Some people use scissors and all that kind of crazy mess in the can. We don't want to use that. Uh, We just want to use like We're gonna bring this up. We'll bring the heat up. We'll bring it up to a simmer. Okay. And in the meantime, um, what I might do is, would you mind uh, filming for Angela? And she's gonna work on another little project okay. while this is coming up to a simmer. Because of course, we don't want to watch a lot of water boil. Right. <laughs> because if you watch a, you know, watching a yeah, it's gonna boil. It takes a minute. Hi guys, I'm Angela Evans. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you so much for having us. We are, we're very excited to be here. Um, so my husband is doing an amazing job on this dish, and I'm already salivating like from the smell. I wish you could smell the phone. That would be just amazing. But um, what I'm doing is uh, they when I talked with Jeremy and I talked with Jennifer, they said that we need something that was healthy, something that was easy to make and something that also can be stored either in your refrigerator or in your freezer. So um, we were actually having breakfast one morning and Chris had bought me some of this almond flour and I saw a recipe for oats and pancakes and I said, all right, well, let's try it. And I tried almond flour with it. And so this is an actual gluten-free dish. Um, I know a lot of people have celiac disease out there. I know a lot of people are gluten intolerant. My son has a little bit of intolerance to gluten. He hasn't been diagnosed with it, but I just noticed that he eats a lot of pasta, or he eats a lot of things, you know, with gluten in it, crackers, or things like that. You know, it kind of doesn't help him digestively. So um, what we're doing is we're just going to create something really fun and something that you can make, you know, early in the morning while your dish over here is, you know, reducing down for 15 minutes, you can start this one. So this one's very simple. Um, the recipe that I gave Jennifer, I'm actually cutting this one in half because I don't want to make 20 pancakes but it will actually create 20 pancakes. So I have got one cup of the almond flour, which is here, and you can use any kind of gluten-free flour. I feel like rice flour would be good too, but this one just seems to go really well. Um, The higher end flours that you have, the better your product is gonna be. Um, All right, then we have a half a cup of oats, which is right here, and these are just rolled quick oats. Um, Again, you can use, you know, higher gift products, these are just something you can find in your house, you know, but quick oats are great. 
Um, you don't want anything that you have to soak overnight or that you have to cook and boil. You know, these will actually absorb all the liquid that's in this dish. All right, so here I've got one tablespoon of brown sugar, which I'm going to kind of break up in my hands. I've been sitting for a second, so the molasses is kind of kind of getting a little crispy. And then one tablespoon, or sorry, one teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to add that in there as well. Okay. All right, and then I have one tablespoon of baking powder and one tablespoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So all your dry ingredients will go in first. You're cinnamon gonna, really sets it off. Cinnamon sets it off. Oh, definitely. And you can add any kind of spices. If you're wanting to cook this, you know, during the fall. I feel like fall spices are year-round. So um, you could add star, you could add like anything ground here. Nutmeg, you could do a little bit of star anise. Um, you could do um, in fruit in here too. You know, I'm keeping this just as simple as possible. But pancakes are amazing. I love pancakes, and this is just a fun dish to do. So I'm just breaking up the sugar a little bit, just kind of whisking it together to kind of keep it incorporated. All right. Okay. All right. And then for a little bit of a leavener, I have a whole egg here. This is a farmer's chicken egg. We actually get wonderful eggs from. Uh, Shipbrook Farms uh, from our farmer Luke, and he's amazing. We just love his eggs. So, obviously, you crack your egg separate into a bowl because you don't want shell in here. And if you are getting farmers market or farm chicken eggs, you don't want a baby chicken in here either. Sometimes that can happen. So, always crack it separate. <laughs> I learned that from my dad. Um, we were cooking and we got farm eggs and. I was just cracking and cracking, and next thing I know, I see a chicken, and I went, wait, what? I can't uh, wait for that to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then your fat as well. You can use butter, but um, butter is, is, you know, higher in fat, obviously. Um, they do have vegan butter that's out there that you can use, but um, this recipe calls for oil, and oil is a great fat, and it's also a healthier fat. So this, this is just quinoa oil or salad oil. Um, you can use grapeseed. You can use avocado oil. You know, definitely gives it a, a good flavor and a good fat content. So we're just going to add that to you. And then I've got a cup of buttermilk. And buttermilk is a good fat as well. I remember my great-grandmother, she would actually drink this. She would have cornbread on the side and she would drink it. And I don't know how she would do that, but I don't know. It just, it's to each his own. You oh. know, so she was it's definitely all about that. Looking at yeah, second. sure. Okay. So we're going to get back to the pasta dish real quick. Um, the, the water obviously is still up to the wall now. Right here. And uh, chickpeas and tomatoes and whatnot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little spice to it. Now some people that your clients or whatever do not have, don't want spice and you don't have to put it in there. It depends on what content. I'm pretty sensitive to it, so we're just going to put in a little pinch of red pepper flake to it. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is actually cook about six ounces of the pasta in that liquid. Okay, so this is the other part. Now we're going to get back to Angela. Ah, back to me. All right, so what I've done is I've just put this together. Um, you can let this sit for just a little bit um, to, you know, take about, about five minutes to the pan. So, because um, the oats, what they're going to do is they're going to start to soak in that buttermilk. So, so what we've done is you can also see the bubbles starting to uh, activate. Once you have baking soda and you have buttermilk, um, there are a lot of acidic things and elements that are happening. So, with baking soda, baking powder, you're also getting a leavener and you're getting something that is going to activate with that buttermilk. So that way you can get a nice fluffy cake. Um, to people who know how to separate eggs and who know how to um, basically whip eggs and whip egg whites. Um, I actually tried it to where I just did the yolks in here and whisked them together and then I took the egg whites and I just whisked those by hand so they were nice and fluffy and stiff and then I just folded those in. So if you want a nice and fluffy, like picture perfect, like oh man, you, you can make them crazy. Like I've, I've seen some Japanese videos where their pancakes are like insanely huge. You know, it's, yeah. 
So it's fun to experiment. It's fun to, to you know, play with things like this. It's practice. It's good. All right. So make sure that it's hot. I'm using a pan baking spray. Baker's Joy is probably one of the best that you use for cast iron. We're using our cast iron griddle over here. This is a breakfast griddle. And you can use any nonstick surface, you know, of course. Cast iron, we you can't go wrong with cast iron. So I'm just spraying this down. I'm gonna put a little oil on the pan as well. So you see it's smoking already, that's a little too hot. So I'm turning it down just a little bit. And we have found out that using a pan release on cast iron with a little, the, the, the pan release spray, like the pans and things like that, and there's all brands that have a little flour, and it'll work really well with cast iron, typically if you were using, say, butt pans or muffin tins or things that are made out of cast iron, it, it just helps release any type of baking product especially pancakes or a cake or something like that. So that's the one thing that we like to use. All right. So I have gotten a ladle here. You can use a ladle. I actually used an ice cream scoop at home. Um, but it's basically about two ounces. If you want them smaller, like little silver dollar pancakes, you can use an ounce or you can just use a big kitchen spoon. But you're going to try and place them. See that sizzle? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay. Inside them about an inch apart from each other. You can see how they spread out really well. That's the fat and the oil and the and the buttermilk that is letting it spread that way. So the pan was a little hot, but that's okay. That's just what that brown is. That's from my pan spray and that's a little bit of oil. But that's okay. Crispier. I like crispy. Crispy edges are good. I think as a kid, when my mom and dad would make pancakes, I loved eating the crispy edge first and then getting to the softness inside. So, so as you can see, the bubbles are starting to, you know, you can see the heat coming through the bottom. So what, you, what you're looking for is you're looking for the bubbles to kind of start to present themselves. That means it's cooking all the way through. Now, a lot of people I know are going to ask that question, well, how do you know when to flip a pancake? So you're just going to kind of test a little bit. You're going to try, if it's, really, you know, able to get up on your spatula. That one's almost there. But you're looking for just a cooked bottom. Just looking for a cooked bottom. I'm not the best flipper, so do not judge me. <laughs> that's right, Yay! Awesome. So you see that's that right there. That's from where you started and that's where it spread out. So you can kind of see how it's cooked itself around. There's that crispy edge we're talking about, guys. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. And then the butter saturated in the middle of the pancake. Yes. See, not the best flipper. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. It's all about the wrist. Just like, you know, Chris can flip things in pans. I'm not the best at it. I kind of do okay. He has practice. <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's a beautiful golden brown. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a nice golden brown. And you should only flip these pancakes once. <laughs> Obviously, that one got checked under. That's okay. A little art deco here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. Looks way better than the pancakes I had this morning. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I'm going to kind of slide my pan a little bit because it's a little cold. It's just cooking a little more on this side than it is. So I'm going to slide this pancake a little closer to the middle, kind of give it a nice rotation. But it's releasing from this skillet, which is wonderful. That's what you want. In your nonstick skillet, you want to make sure there is enough fat, there is enough of something that is able so it doesn't stick because that's the worst thing is trying to get a pancake off and it's stuck or anything that's stuck. Um, if you're cooking fish or if you're cooking chicken, you want to make sure that you have a nice hot enough pan and enough of a oil or a fat to keep it from sticking. All right. Let's see if I can release this last one. 
You can see over here that the uh, pasta is still cooking in the sauce. It's almost there. So what I did was I just picked it up with my spatula and I just kind of touched it a bit. You can kind of feel if it, if it doesn't bounce back at you and it's still a little indented. That means it's a little raw still. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that just a little bit, let that cook just a little bit more. Because once it bounces back at you and doesn't leave an indention, that means it's cooked all the way through. You've got enough air and enough spring to where it bounces way through. So yeah, so I think we're we're good on these two. Okay, perfect. All right. And this one got a little bit lighter just the way that the pan is shaped. Obviously, if you have a rounder surface, but um, the corners are a little colder than normal, so I'm just kind of slide it. But yeah, I think these are ready. And you can use your favorite syrup with this. You can use honey. Um, Chris and I actually have a, a golden eagle syrup, which is probably one of the best things. It's just throw away your regular Aunt Jemima. It's the best. So, all right, let me give another spray. And I'm going to continue. Chris, how's our pasta looking? Pretty good. Okay. So, still not al dente quite yet, but what it's doing is the pasta itself is absorbing that liquid, the tomato um, juice, the garlic flavor, the onion flavor, the rosemary flavor, the little bit of heat, the, uh, the chickpea uh, starch, and it's just kind of uh, cooking down and cooking pasta as well. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually taste it for salt content to make sure. And yes, it does need just a little bit more salt. Always, Always <laughs> taste your food. That is the number one key. You can cook a recipe and you can make it perfect, but if you do not taste for salt or taste for what it needs, it can always be off. Always, always, always taste your food. I even tasted this batter while y'all weren't looking. So. <laughs> Just to make sure it was right, too. And while she's cooking uh, these pancakes off, what I have done is I've got a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and I've grated about three or four tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Uh, and this is going to be for in the last few minutes of the cooking process of the pasta when it's just a little bit past al dente. Al dente means to the two, if you've ever heard that. I didn't know if it's a culinary term or whatnot. But, um, and what would happen if you added your cheese in now? Um, actually, it would, it would kind of go up, go up just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you want it to almost act like how uh, butter would be put into a sauce, whereas we're actually adding cheese. It's sort of a finisher. It's not, if you could say, put in butter into a sauce too early, it would break and dissipate, much like cheese. It would be the same kind of process. So again, we got about three or four tablespoons of Parmesan, and then I'm gonna grate some extra. I can do some extra. I can um, actually, some people like it uh, cut up into Do it like that, a little bit of both. You can just depend on how you like it. If you like it shaved, if you like it grated or whatever, but definitely uh, in the process of the, the finishing of that sauce, you want to grate it. You want to have it grate. And that can uh, craft Parmesan is horrible. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't promote yeah. that. It's got to be some sort of some sort of fresh cheese. Or if you do have butter, use butter. But we like to use Parmesan here. Um, okay, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to check. Ooh, look at me. Beautiful pancakes. And again, uh, at, at our house, uh, for our son, I know that Angel had mentioned this, we use, we'll eat our fill in the pancakes, and then we will lay them out into freezer bags and lay them out and put them in the freezer. That's great for meal prep. Uh, you can just pull out how many you'd like to eat for breakfast, thaw them out very quick, and just pop them in the oven uh, on a cheap pan, and then just put a little bit of syrup on them. Ready to go. If you like three or four, pull three or four out, you know? So, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show you all what I've done. So, 
we're not perfect chefs. Obviously, a mistake happened. So this wasn't cooked all the way on the bottom. So when I tried to flip it, it folded up under me. So we have an empanada shape. <laughs> but as you can see, these are a bit more darker. So I actually let these cook a bit more. So that was my fault. I was, you know, premature. That's okay. So, yeah, they look great on the bottom. Nice golden brown. That's what you're looking for. And I'm going to show you how to do another. So not quite yet. You can kind of feel in the middle. They're still kind of, you can still feel they're a little soft. So these are almost there. Yay. Uh, Wonderful. And as you can see, it's sort of cooking down now, getting nice. I'm going to test one right now. It's probably going to need a few more minutes, I would imagine. And Chris, if you wanted to stretch this dish a little more, you could add stock or something to it that could Good. stretch down a little more. But I'm actually going to add, um, the pasta was done. So it's al dente, right. ready to go. Um, I'm going to add that. Three to four tablespoons of Parmesan to it. Never mind me, I've got a habit of putting the towel on every time. <laughs> sort of. But folding that in there. Reduce down the temp reduce down the uh, heat just a, a bit. So you just put the ugly, the ugly pancakes underneath your pretty yeah, ones. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of like a croissant or a shell. So no. You're not ugly pancake. You're fine. <laughs> it's gonna taste just as good. So don't feel bad if your pancakes don't come out picture perfect. Believe me, it's practice. I mean, I, I don't make pancakes all the time, but when I do, I feel like I've made them better than I did on on Sunday. So you know, practice makes perfect. All right. All right. Well, that being said, okay. we're going to serve this up. All, right. all worked out kind of. So I'm going to discard the rosemary sprig. So obviously, you don't want to eat that. Now, some people would say, is this a pasta dish, or is this a, I mean, obviously it's a pasta dish, but is it a soup? Yeah. It is sort of, whenever we first put the uh, pasta into that liquid, you would think, I mean, it was really sad looking, it was really not, it uh, didn't have a lot of flavor, but as the, the water and the chickpea liquid and all the onions broke down, and everything, it really got a lot of flavor in a short period of time. So. This is about the right consistency. Oh yeah. See, pasta's cooked, ready to go. And you don't have to, you know, I love the fact that this will do about, we've got six ounces, I weighed it out about six ounces of pasta, and you can choose whatever pasta you like, mm -hmm. um, but we like to use something that's shortcut, uh, that usually is a noodle or whatnot. And this will run about four or five good portions, you know? This is a light but yet hearty, healthy dish. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but it's just like, it's very satisfying, it's light, it's vegetarian. Yes. Uh, you can get gluten-free pasta, you can do that. Yes. That is one thing. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna get four or five nice uh, portions out of this. You can kind of see that was just six ounces. Again, I probably got enough to do maybe okay, another bowl. one more. Uh, bowl. Yeah, okay. one more. And what I'll do in the meantime is finish them off with some corn here. And if you have parsley, throw parsley in it. But you know, you, most people don't have fresh parsley on hand or anything like that. You can do that. Jazz it up. That's fantastic. And you can add meat to this if you want to, but I feel like it will last longer without meat products in it because meat products break down a little bit more and quicker. If you notice, like, say you've had 
a spaghetti dish or something like that, you notice in the fridge it kind of gets a little bit more, you know, like not as good as it sits there longer. But to for any vegetarian dishes, they do last longer in the freezer or, uh, or in the refrigerator. Right. But again, you can kind of yeah. tell this really didn't take that long, mm -hmm. and it was pantry type items. Uh, pasta de cheche. Pasta de <laughs> cheche. Such a cute name. Uh, but it, it basically comes from Italian uh, background where it's cooking for the poor. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, whereas you're using, can't, uh, using items that you have readily in your pantry. Uh, my Italian is not the best in the world, so I'm not going to go. Anyway, I don't know. But anyway, I think this is. Well, there's an Italian grandma who's saying, good job. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to probably eat these here. And uh, awesome. again, you can take this and finish them at the last minute uh, mm -hmm. for after you pull them out and heat them up. Uh, you can just pop them in a pot, heat it up in a pot. Uh, you can after throw it in your oven. You can microwave it. And I love you, my microwave at home. Chris and I, I don't think we've had a microwave. 11 years, and because we use our oven for everything, we use it, you pop it in the cast iron skillet, and throw it in there as long as it's non stick and has something on the outside, you can reheat anything. So, this can be a quick meal for someone, um, and again, it can last in the freezer, it can last in the refrigerator for seven days. Uh, any, any dish is going to last for about seven days. Pancakes you can freeze, just freeze them flat, don't stack them on top of each other because you can only imagine trying to break apart pancakes. You know, in a big block. So we just laid them out in a, in a, a Ziploc bag and just froze them flat. So and they were perfect. They had them this morning. Yay! Thank you guys. Yes. Thank you guys. We do have a couple of questions, and I'll, I'll say uh, from someone who from someone who struggles with trying to find a daily lunch every day. I think this is great for meal prepping as well, because it looks like you've got at least five meals there with something that took thirty minutes or less. Uh, so, uh, so we did have a couple questions here. Um, this one comes sure. from one of our staff. It says, "How will the pasta flavor change using regular tomatoes if you don't have San Marzano?" You can, and you can just crush them up just as well. Uh, exactly for tomatoes, you know, we love to use those. Uh, the only thing that you're going to experience with um, doing that is. Sometimes the peel of the tomato uh, will be, if you don't mind that, uh, you can shock your fresh tomato. You can put an X on the top of your uh, tomato and blanch it to take that peel off if that's something that offends or whatever. But I have no problem with tomato skin uh, personally. But these canned tomatoes, you're able to use those because the, the, the busy work's been done. They've been blanched. They've Obviously, the tomato uh, skin has been taken off, and all you have to do is crush them up. And they also have a lot of flavor. And another question, too. To add I was going to say another question, too. Like, if you were if you were to prepare, uh, if you were to use meat with with this dish, would you would that be something that you would that you would maybe pan sear or grill separately, and then put this on top of it, or would you would you recommend not cooking it directly in it? How, what do you think? Any type of protein, like a piece of grilled chicken would go great on top of this, a piece of pan seared, cast iron seared, or grilled fish, great on this. If you did this meat, uh, you would have to do almost like an elite salt bread. Uh, you could you know, do the traditional, almost like spaghetti, where you would ground your, your meat, if you had ground meat. Uh, and I know right now, with everything going on, ground meat sort of up in the air. Uh, but you can, Sear it off, drain off the fat, and then fold it back into your dish after your pasta is done. Um, because if you're cooking the pasta in this style, uh, in that way, your meat is going to get overcooked mm -hmm. because it's obviously cooking out hot water and then the liquids and things like that. So that would be something. Uh, if it was a ground cooked meat, it would have to be in. It was an afterthought. But a grilled chicken or a pan seared fish or uh, a grilled pork of some sort would go great in this, obviously. Great, thanks. Uh, would you recommend, if you were to introduce maybe 
I know a lot of people cook with wine, especially Italian dishes. Would this be something that you could be open to introducing uh, cooking with wine to? And if you were to cook with a wine, which what type of wine would, would you recommend? No, oh, let's cook with wine. Uh, cooking with wine on this, you could probably use a, a Chardonnay, something that's a little bit more buttery. Uh, whereas like Cabernet, um, Capsab, uh, it would be, it would it wouldn't be as, as as nice. It wouldn't actually yield a better flavor. So you would want to use a lighter white. Uh, it, it's like say, whenever I was first doing my onions and my uh, garlic, you could deglaze with the wine of your choice, but preferably you would use a lighter white or a buttery white uh, wine. Um, I would suggest the Chardonnay, preferably. If you wanted to deglaze in that process, add your water, add your tomatoes. Uh, red wine, you would get a completely different other product. Uh, your pasta would look really weird. <laughs> but it, you know, it depends on what you like to but uh, in that um, for this dish. All right, so we have a question now for Angela. Angela, uh, do you know of any gluten-free flour options for the pancakes that you would recommend? Um, besides this almond flour one, say if you're allergic to nuts, um, I know that there's a rice flour blend, and I know that King Arthur makes a wonderful gluten-free blend. Um, you can actually have a wonderful wind cuisine that's right down the road, and they have a, a King Arthur selection of gluten-free flour. So King Arthur is probably one of the best. Great. I am going to share back to our PowerPoint real quick. If anybody has any questions, feel free to share. We have a chat option as well as a, uh, there's a and a portion that you can post your, your questions in. Uh, if not, we really appreciate Chris and Angela coming on today and, and showcasing two, two fabulous looking meals. I know that uh, there's only so many peanut butter and jellies a raw man should eat during a week, so I'll definitely be trying these two recipes. <laughs> Oh, that is true. That is true. Well, we appreciate you guys and we thank you so very much for, for having us on. And Chris and I definitely, you know, um, will like to do it again. I mean, yeah. this was, this was a fun time. So um, we appreciate it. Thanks guys. You got any, any last words you want to give us as far as Cafe DuPont, uh, as far as like location or anything? I have it pulled up on the screen now, the, the, uh, the, the logo as well as the, the street address and the phone number. Was there anything you guys need to add to that? Uh, just, just pray that we find a, a cure for this virus and it's normal. I mean, it's just, uh, we don't know whenever we're going to be able to, um, open back up at full capacity or what capacity we'll know in a few weeks, uh, the rules and regulations with that. But whenever we come back, um, we're going to be doing courses only. So it'll be a three, a five or a seven course. Uh, our menu will be about 12 items you can mix and match and make it your own. It's a definitely a great place to come for a date night or a um, special occasion or anything like that. Uh, we're just blessed to be doing the things that we love and uh, hopefully we will uh, see you on the other side of the fence one day there <laughs> over yeah. here at the cafe. Uh, but thank y'all so much for um, letting us into y'all's lives. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And we, we thank, thank y'all so much. And um, again, yeah, y'all are awesome. Yeah. See y'all later. Thank you guys. Were you, Angela, were you wanting to uh, to show us anything in the restaurant? I think. Oh, yeah. I sure can. Okay. So let me, let me read you. <laughs> we're doing some... I, just, I just thought about that. No, so. that's okay. That's okay. We're doing some construction right now. We're still doing a little bit of maintenance. So like we've taken our bar apart. We've taken our wine closet apart. But, um, but I want to show you guys. And um, when Chris and I, my husband's been working here since 2000 and I'm going to say two, uh, 2003 was when they opened, um, December of 2003. So, um, so this before this bar was made, this is the back of the bar, but before we actually came over here, this is the office. And so as you can see down here, this is the original 1920s tile. And what they did was there was five layers of carpet that was over this. So they actually dug through this carpet and found this. So they just buffed it out and, um, and just left it. And then when we came up here, um, you can see the vaulted ceiling here. So uh, there was about three layers of sheetrock. And so we just kind of brought it back to the 1920s, you know, 
um, feel. Obviously, it's a little disoriented right now, but um, uh, it was really cool to be able to, you know, know that there's there's history behind, you know, everything here. So as you can see, we've taken our bar apart, and um, this is our, our marble bar that we have here. But uh, but yeah, this is the back of the this part, and then if we go into the main dining room. Um, this used to be the bar back in the day, but this is just storage for right now with our cappuccino machines and stuff. And um, so, so this is just like a water bar to hold our water pitchers and our coffee. But this is the main dining room. This is the back of it. I can kind of go forward so y'all can see. But as you can see, there's a lot of tables. We have a lot of space in here. And depending on what regulations happen, we'll have to take out maybe every other chair. But, but yeah, but this is the main dining room. And you know, we're still working, still, you know, giving it a good polish and a good paint job and, you know, a lot of things happening now. So, but yeah, so this is us. <laughs> That's great. It looks beautiful. We did have another question come through and I, I think, uh, yeah, sure. I think this might be a Chris question as well, but will there be uh, vegan options available when, whenever for the courses uh, when you guys reopen? We, we can do, um, let me flip my camera around. Sorry, I froze for a second. Give me one second. Can you still hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Um, well, what we do is we try and have a few items that are at least vegetarian. I know some of my desserts are vegetarian, um, but we can't accommodate to anyone who is vegan um, or who has special um, allergies or anything like that. That's the first thing that our waiters will ask you is, are there any allergies at the table? Is there anything that our chefs need to know to better prepare your meal? Um, we have had people who actually have come in with sheets of paper and says, hey, I'm allergic to all of these. Is there anything you can do for me? And we'll take that challenge and we'll accept it. So we, we have a lot of, you know, um, people that come in that have certain special, you know, requirements and, you know, we aim for, for perfection. So we'll do the best we can. Great. Well, we, we really thank you guys for joining us today and offering these suggestions because we know that now more than ever, you know, time's of the essence trying to make sure that you, uh, you can you know, fill each day with, with things that are, you know, I guess, make, make the life of a caregiver easier, really for all of us easier. So we really appreciate taking the time to, to join us to offer those suggestions. And, and uh, we would love to, to have you guys next time and jo join us on the, on the next episode It'll be in a couple weeks. But thanks again. Yeah, no problem. We appreciate it. And, and any questions that, you know, your viewers ask later on and you guys want to just contact us, you know, you can, you can, you know, email us and, and we gladly answer what we can. So, but yeah, man, you know, definitely come down to the restaurant when, whenever that is, I'm not sure when we'll open, but we'll definitely make a huge announcement. So. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. Oh, we appreciate you guys. Yeah, Chris is, Chris is back uh, feeding everybody. So I hate that y'all are here. Y'all are missing a great meal. <laughs> <laughs> we can imagine the smell Maybe is the best weekend. <laughs> right. Maybe next time it'll be on an off day and we'll actually be able to, you guys will video us and we'll be able to cook for y'all. And then, you know, we'll just do that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Well, you guys have a great rest, okay. rest of the week. Bye, y'all too. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear gloves, wear a mask. Bye. All right, so I uh, just wanted to close our, our session out here. Uh, we just wanted to briefly go over, again, uh, M4A's information. Uh, we, again, we want to thank uh, Chris and Angela for joining us, but did want to did throw out our spill in the end here just to remind everybody who we are. Uh, we're the Middle Alabama Area Agency on Aging, also known as M4A. Uh, we cover all 67 counties as far as our network goes for the state of Alabama. So if you have anyone who is in need of service who that might help to allow that individual to remain in their home, remain independent, uh, safe and healthy, and of course, Asian Place is kind of our, our tagline for the state network, then feel free to send them our way to see what services we might, we might be able to cover. Ourselves, we cover five counties primarily. That's Blunt, Chilton, St. Clair, Shelby, and Walker. However, we also cover Jefferson County for our senior employment program. The way it typically works, once you call our agency, you go through what's called our ADRC, where they will screen you for information to see what services you might be eligible for. 
whether that's meals, whether that's prescription drug assistance, caregiver assistance, uh, et cetera, and then they will send you over to the appropriate programs to see how we might be able to help. Here's a listing of some of our core programs. I won't you know, spend too much time on them since we've, we've gone on over these on, on each of the videos. So you can refer back if you need to uh, on our YouTube channel or on our social media accounts. But this is just kind of a, a quick list of our key programs that we offer. And we think we pretty much have every aspect of life covered from food to long-term care support services in a long-term care facility. Again, uh, we do wanna uh, shout out for a couple of our programs who are hosting these coffee breaks. We have our new Panda Project, which is a, a grant opportunity that we've received through the Administration for Community Living to provide uh, support services for individuals living with dementia, individuals with IDD who may have a, a high risk of developing dementia, as well as their caregivers, uh, specifically in Shelby County, as well as our Alabama Cares Program that is our traditional uh, caregiver support program provided through the Older Americans Act. So both of those programs have teamed up to bring these coffee break sessions to our viewers, and we hope that they are beneficial. Every time we have one of these, we try to have a different speaker, a different topic to discuss, so we hope that you find these to be beneficial. Uh, this is our website. If you go on, if you know of someone who needs assistance, whether that's yourself, whether that's a family member, whether that's a neighbor, whoever, uh, you can go to m4a.org forward slash referral and you can fill out that information and it will send it to our email address so that we can follow up on that referral. Or you can traditionally, of course, call through 205-670-5770 uh, to speak with our receptionist to do the traditional way of, of making a referral. Follow us on social media. I did not include the YouTube logo on here, but we're starting to post these on YouTube. So make sure you check that out if you want to catch any previous episodes. Uh, we have a playlist on our YouTube channel called Coffee Break Sessions. So it's, it's in there and it has the, previous, the, the last two previous videos in there as well. Feel free to share and, and refer back to those. Again, uh, the other social media accounts we're on, of course, the three big ones, YouTube, I mean, excuse me, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as when you go to our, our website, you'll be prompted to join our newsletter. So feel free to join our newsletter. We post things in there like the coffee break, uh, like some other community events that we may be having or, or different uh, things that are going on in, in the communities that we serve, as well as across the state of Alabama. Uh, we post those. Right now we're doing two, two newsletters a week, but traditionally we do once a week. So feel free to join that. And, and, and uh, you know, if you have any suggestions for things that need to go in the newsletter, feel free to send us those as well. So again, our, our information is here. We are the Middle Alabama Area Agency on Aging, also known as M4A. Uh, we're located at 209 Cloverdale Circle in Alabaster. Just, it's more in the, the Saginaw area, just across from the post office in Saginaw on 31, heading towards uh, Calera from Alabaster. And of course, uh, you, can, you can find us there uh, five days a week during, during, during normal conditions, uh, eight to five, as well as you can reach us through our, our telephone number, 205-670-5770, or toll free at 1-866-570-2998. And of course, you can uh, visit our website like I've already mentioned. So we will catch you guys next time. We have already got plans for our next meeting. It will be two Wednesdays from now. Uh, let me pull up my calendar. That will be the 20th of this month. We're gonna be joined by our Living Well Alabama coordinator, who's gonna be going over some, some different exercise techniques that might be able to help alleviate stress and, and, uh, and you know just promote a healthy lifestyle, as well as we'll probably have some other brain health and, and uh, health and safety type, type uh, criteria to or information to go over as well with our viewers. So we really appreciate you joining us. Until next time, have a great week.